Hello, and welcome to part two of module three. So I think this is where we left off. All right, so let's continue. So at the end of, at the, at the center end, the data at the application layer is always encapsulated um, into a TCP segment. And then the, the TCC, TC, oh, I'm sorry. The TCP segment is then encapsulated into an IP packet, and then the IP packet is encapsulated into an Ethernet frame. The decapsulation occurs at the receiver end, where the Ethernet frame, and then you open up the Ethernet frame, you take out the, uh, the packet, and then from the packet, you can get the segment, and then you get the data back. All right, so um, let's continue on. Let's look at some standard organizations. Uh, open standards encourages interoperability, competition, and innovation. Uh, some of the internet standards, please write those down. Some of these, uh, the internet standards organization include the ISOC, IAP, IETF. They are, they, you know, the IETF are the ones that develop updates and maintain the internet and TCP IP technology, and you got the IRTF as well. All right, IANA. IANA are the ones that manage all the public IP addresses and domain names on the internet. You need to know that, so write that down as well. Remember, you need to write all of this down to submit them as homework. They are a sub-organization of the ICANN. So it's always good to know all of these different organizations. Here's another whole bunch of them. The IEEE and the EITIA. The, I, the EITIA are the ones who have set standards for connector for connector pins like the RJ forty fives and the um, and the connect and so on, the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union Telecommunication Standards are in are in uh, they are an international organization to enable the whole world and to enable them to communicate the whole world to be able to communicate with each other. All right, let's take a look at the reference model. What are the reference models? The benefits of the reference models, which we'll, we'll take a look at these. Um, well, you know what? Let's just go back a little bit. OSI is an ITU ISO standard. Um, ISO, which stands for, I'm sorry, the OSI stands for the Open System Interconnection Model, has seven layers that the data must go through before it exits off on the physical layer. So the data is encapsulated to each layer before it exits onto the, the transmission media. The best way to remember the seven layers of the OSI model, which you need to know, um, is all people seem to need data processing. That's a good mnemonic to remember it. All people seem to need data processing. So you need to know these. Please write these down, the seven layers of the OSI model and the, how they are compared to the TCP IP model. So the top three layers is equal to the application layer of the TCP IP. The transport is still transport. Network is called internet on the TCP IP model. And the data link in the physical is called the network access on the other end. All right, so please write these benefits down of a layered model because you will be asked questions when you're taking exam, when you're taking your uh, quiz, well, the Cisco exam. All right, so this is will always come up on the test. All right, moving on. Here are the seven layers, and each layer has its own description. Again, please write these down because they, they're very, very important. So in any data communication course, you will you will need to know what the seven layers of the OSI model and what each one of these layers uh, responsibility is. So please copy that as well. All right, and, uh, and also copy down the TCP IP model. The TCP IP model is the one that came out first. So if, um, hold on a second. So TCP IP was first created by the Department of Defense then the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, which is part of the ITU, used the four-layered model, the TCP IP model, and then they came up with the seven layers. 
So they actually took this from the Department of Defense, the TCPIP, and this is in the early 70s, and came up with the open system interconnection model, the seven layer model. All right, moving on, let's take a talk about data encapsulation. All right, so data starts, uh, why do you need to segment the data to break up the data? Segmentation of messages, when data, or sometimes we call it a message, is passed to the transport layer from the top layers to the transport layer, the first thing that the TCP at the transport layer does is it takes the data or the segments and break it up into smaller segments to increase speed and efficiency. All right, it will also, what it does is it does sequencing. Sequencing at the TCP layer We'll also add a sequence number to each of those segments to indicate which segment was first and which one was second and so on, so that the receiver is able to reassemble the data on the other end if the data or if the segments were received out of order. That's what the sequencing is. We place numbers on each one of them. All right, the PDU, which stands for Protocol Data Units, is what does the, there's a name at each of each layer. So you need to remember this. At the top layer, layer seven, six, and five of the OSI model, the PDU, the data is called data. And then at the transport layer, when you pass the data to the transport layer, when you add headers to it, it becomes a segment. And when you, add, when you give the segment to the network layer and you add more headers, it's called a packet. And when you give the packet to the NIC and you add more headers and a trailer, it's called a frame. And then the frame is placed on, on, the, on, the, on the media in bits, in ones and zeros. All right. So here's an exa example, uh, example of an encapsulation. In, in, I'm sorry. Encapsulation example. We did this before already, right? The data at the transport layer becomes a segment. The data is placed into a segment. The segment is placed into a packet. And the packet is placed into a frame. And then the frame is placed on the media in ones and zeros. All right, on the other end, you, you grab the, uh, the ones and zeros. You form them into a frame. Then, the fra then you open the frame. You pull the packet out. Then you take the packet. Then you pull the segment out of it. And you take the segment, then you pull the data and you give it to the application layer and you open it up. All right, now let's look at data access. Um, there are two types of addresses that we need to worry about. There is the network layer address. That's the layer three address. That's the, where the IP addresses are. IP addresses or the net network layer address, the layer three address, is used to identify what network you are in. This is similar to a zip code, the area that you are in. The data link layer address, that's layer two address, which is, which is called the MAC address. The MAC stands for Media Access Control. This identifies the host in the LAN, which is similar to a building number in an area. All right, we'll discuss this more in a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at a little bit more detail about the layer three address. The source, I want you to write this down, the source IP address identifies the network you are in. It usually given to you by the DHCP server. This is similar to the source zip code on a letter. The destination IP address, which identifies the network destination located in, it usually given by the DNS server. This is similar to the destination zip code on a letter. Both the source and the destination IP addresses are attached at the network layer, layer three of the OSI model. All right, uh, devices on the same network, by the way, must devices on the same network must have the same network portion of the, uh, of the IP address. Remember when we configured the switch in the PC, um, I think, on the last, in chapter two, uh, the PC was given, we, uh, we made sure that the first three numbers are the same. The switch had the IP address 192.168.10.1, and the PC had the address 192.168.10.2. So 192.168.10, the first three numbers had to be the same on the PC on the switch. That means they are on the same 
network. Okay, that's a protocol. That's a standard. You have to make sure that everybody in the same LAN must have the same network portion of the IP address. All right. So remember, this is not always true. This is just an example, the first three numbers. Okay, so it's not always the first three numbers. This was just an example. Now, let's look at the data link addresses. The source data link address, which is layer two, a MAC address, you, are, you get this address from your NIC. This address is attached to the frame source MAC address. The destination data link MAC address is gotten from the source sending an ARP request, uh, requesting, requesting, you know, uh, sending a, an ARP request. This is like sending a broadcast message to every LAN in the host and saying, hey, whoever has this IP address, please give me your Mac. All right, so let's, uh, here's something I want you to pay attention to. So let's go through this example and pay attention now because uh, this is very important and we'll discuss more this in details in class. So let's say PC1 wants to send data to this um, server. So the first thing that, it, that PC1 does is that the network layer PC1 gets his address from the LAN DHCP server. Now, because PC1 pointed his mouse and chose the server name, let's say serve five on his computer, his computer is going to look up the name SR, SRV5 in the DNS server and gives him the destination IP address. Both the source and the destination IP addresses are then attached to the packet, and then the packet is given to the Ethernet NIC. PC1 Ethernet NIC takes the packet and encapsulates it in a frame. It places the frame, and then what he does is he takes, he places the frame in the, I'm sorry, um, the yeah, the NIC takes the packet and encapsulates it in the frame, and it takes the, the source MAC address from his NIC and places it on the frame, right? And then, then PC1 sends an ARP request to every device in the LAN asking for the destination MAC address. Yeah, whoever has this IP address, please give me MAC. Uh, give me your MAC. So who's going to answer them? The server is going to answer them back. And when the server responds with his MAC address, then PC1 takes the MAC address, places it on the frame, and sends it out to sends it out to the switch. The switch the switch looks at the destination MAC address and will send the frame to the server. Now, what happens if PC1 wants to send data to the web server? Same thing happens. But the only difference is when PC1 types in, you know, the first thing that happened, PC1 gets his IP address from the DHCP server. Then PC1 types in the web server URL in the web browser, right, and of the PC on his computer. It's going to look up the address he types in in the DNS server and gives him the destination IP address. Both the source and the destination IP addresses are attached to the packet, and then the packet is sent to the Ethernet NIC. Then the PC1 Ethernet NIC takes the packet and encapsulates it in a frame. It places the source MAC address on the frame. PC1 then sends out an ARP request to every device in the LAN asking for the destination MAC address for the known IP. Of course, no one is going to respond because the IP address is not in the LAN. By default, PC1 will then ask for the MAC address of the gateway. That's why we call this the default gateway. He's going to ask for this MAC address. And then the default gateway is going to give him his, his MAC address. PC1 takes the MAC address and attaches it to the frame and sends that the frame to the switch. Then the switch will send the frame to the router instead of... Uh, to the router because now because nobody responded to here most likely the packet is going to go outside then the wrap once the router grabs the frame he's going to unwrap the frame takes the packet out re-encapsulate it into another frame and sends it to this router and so on so therefore the packet always are changing frames as they traverse the network till it finally reaches the destination all right, we will go over this in details in class. This is a fun fundamental learning objective you need to know in this class. All right, so take the notes that I gave you and uh, we'll continue with this in class. All right, I'll talk to you then.